The Magic Swimmer is something that's pretty unique to the canal, I think. I have rarely seen people using them in the surf. Uh, I do use them in the surf in certain situations, and they do work great. I mean, the, the shape is spot on for so many different bait fish, and the action, I mean, it looks alive. Um, in the canal, the way that we seem to do best on them is to cast pretty far up tide and then work the plug fast on the surface. Um, it's almost like, the, like a cross between a fast moving offshore lure and a dandy plug. You know, you want that V wake, but you have to, you have to keep up with it so that it's swimming with the tide, which is more natural than having it swim against the tide. And you really don't want it to get past you. Uh, you want to bring it right to your rod tip. You want to keep it swimming straight along with the tide. And um, if it gets by you, I'm not saying that they never hit it, but in most cases, you're going to do your best damage by working it back toward you and keeping it swimming along with the current. And when, you know, when it's a blitz situation and you have a lot of fish pursuing bait in tight, Honest, honestly, the faster you fish it, the better. And the hits are unlike anything. I mean, they hit the plug so hard, uh, I think because they actually believe that it's real. So there's a couple different sizes that the guys use down here. Um, most of us use the big one, which is about nine inches long. Um, as far as colors go, I think the best color in general is white. Um, I have this one that I painted up to look like a mackerel and they do really well. Um, the other color that seems to do pretty well at certain times is uh, the six and a half inch version. And that one, the action is the same. I mean, you, you're fishing it the same. The technique is the same. Um, but it's more, for me, I'm just trying to match the profile of whatever bait I'm seeing in front of me. And the other thing that is pretty important is no tail hook. On, on either size. Um, after talking to Patrick Seville about these things, um, he told me that the, the rear joint is not up to the task of landing a really big fish and the action is unchanged. So we swap out the, uh, like on the big one, we swap out the two belly hooks with a 4.0 VMC and a 3.0 VMC. And on the smaller one, we just swap out the forward hook with a 3.0 VMC and neither of them have a tail hook on them. And that's, that's how we do it. Striped bass anglers. It's funny where Kevin fishes in Cape Cod, they love the stick shads, they love the magic swimmers, mm. yet where I fish, a lot of guys are afraid of these baits. What's the, for the striped bass fishermen, what is the best way to use these baits? I've seen mm. you do <laughs> Quite a few things last few days over here. Mm. So tell me. So there's two baits that truly complement each other. I mean, a lot. Stick shad is your most go-to bait. First, fantastic for long distance. We know there are many cases where long distance where is key. So you have to reach the first before thinking about how to have a lure swimming or whatever. So the, the stick shad, first of all, make that very long cast. The magic swimmer, where it's a jointed bait. So when you cast. You cannot expect to have the same hydrodynamics oh, or no, aerodynamics. Of the brakes would have so yeah, the wind resistance. Obviously. obviously. So that one, first thing, long distance. And then we have that power kill. That is key. That power kill creates turbulence. So now that bait you can twitch it, you can jerk it, you can burn it, you can even troll it. Yeah, all a, lot kind of, of speed. a lot of guys like to. Uh, I actually mm. had a behind a boat today on a troll and it, it stayed in. But a yeah. lot of guys I know like to just work it fast. Yeah, you can work it fast as fast as you can. You can work it medium speed, but really you can twitch it. So you have different action. For example, if you keep the rod up and you twitch it like that, then it will have those white darts sideways. That's a sinking. We have also a fast sinking, which is much heavier. Right. But the sinking, you will keep it probably between one to two, three uh, feet of water. So you can fish even in a pretty shallow place when you have rocky uh, area and stuff like that. So you just Work it like this, you right. keep reading, and you go like that. If you want to have something more erratic, then you twitch it or you jerk it, but right. sideways. Then, it's more erratic, but then you will be able to go a bit fast, right. uh, deeper, deeper, sorry. Deeper, yes. When you crank it fast or medium to fast, uh, typically you will keep the bait 
pretty close to the top for yeah, sinking. About a foot, foot off. Uh, Something like that. Today, yeah. If you have a fast sinking, yeah. you will be more likely to be four to six foot. That's why we have those two models, depending on how deep you fish or right, how strong obviously. the current is. So those are the very strong things for the stick right. shad. The Magic Swimmer. It's the sickest lure I've ever seen swim. And so when did every captain say the same thing today. That is the key. When the fish are very finicky, there are many, many times, that is the one way to go. Because you have the same quality like many soft plastic lures may have, where you have so much realistic movement, you can go from very slow to very fast. And you can and jerk still it. It's stable though. It Super doesn't stable. Pop out. It doesn't. Yeah. And when you go very fast, you go quick on the top. Sometimes the tail shakes the water like a popper does a little bit. Yeah. So you attract the attention of the fish very much. That's very interesting. And you have floating, sinking, and fast sinking model. In that case, that's a 190 fast sinking. That means when you cast and you let it drop, you swim on the I way down. I actually was going to mention that. I think that was my favorite feature of this lure. When it comes down, it looks real like a wounded bait fish. It doesn't just drop and just... You know, so I see yeah. you jerk it and then let it sink for the Kubera snap and yeah. jerk it. But it's the same for the striped bass. Right. You can let it play, go down in a place that's a bit deeper in a channel or something or like a that. a jetty or a canal. Or a exactly. Yeah. So it's not just so to just do you will have on top. Basically, you yeah. jig it. Exactly. And, and I, I guess, like no, yeah. you know how to use a jig, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have no I doubt. I think we all know that. <laughs> I guess so. You can do that with the Magic Swimmer. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, You're so friend. welcome. And you as well. All right, so here we have the stick shed. This is a plug that's gained a lot of popularity in the canal over the last few years. Um, it's a great plug when there's a lot of big bait around. It's great when there's bunker around, there's big sea herring, there's big mackerel, anything like that. This has the profile to draw the attention of fish that are keyed in on that size bait. Uh, one of the issues that we have with it is that it has a hook hanger, not like a through-wired wooden plug that has a swivel, and that's the rotation of that swivel really helps to negate the leverage that a big fish can get when it's got a big piece of wood in its mouth or a big piece of plastic in this case. Uh, so what we've done um, is first of all we do away with the tail hook altogether. Uh, I've seen more than one of these things broken because this the hook hanger on the tail just isn't up to the task of handling a big fish. Uh, the forward hook we remove that altogether um, and we put in its place a stronger split ring, a 4-0 cut VMC, in a 500 pound croc swivel. And I will, uh, I'll demonstrate how that's all put together in the next segment. Um, you know, first and foremost, you have to remove all the hardware that comes stock on the plug. And I actually save these hooks, they're really sharp and they can be good for other plugs. Okay, so now we got rid of those. And like I say, we're not gonna put anything on the tail. What I have here already pre-made is a 300-pound uh, test uh, Rasco swivel. They're the same ones that Superstrike uses. And this is a 500-pound size 1 croc swivel. So this gets put on the forward hook hanger, the belly hook hanger. And now I have a cut 4.0 VMC. And I'm just going to slip that over the loop of the swivel, close it up with my cutting pliers, and now it's done. And the reason why I use a cut hook instead of the split ring is because, you know, you're, all this extra length has already got this hook hanging way further back than what it was originally. So I've done everything I can to keep that as short as possible while still using the strongest uh, hardware that I can. It doesn't affect the action. Um, the action of this plug, this is the floating one. Um, so the action of this is kind of like a spook, but also if you crank it, you're going to get this sort of shallow diving flutter, and then it'll return to the surface. And it doesn't affect the action at all. <laughs>